we are starting to see a little bit of clearing in the Great Plains. We did get blasted with another MCS overnight. Let's take a look at that. We take it back to yesterday morning. The previous MCS moved through the Arklatex area. Then going forward through the day yesterday, another area of thunderstorms gets going in Kansas and Oklahoma. So that's going to be about 9 to 10 p.m. Heavy storms across the Oklahoma City area. And those developed into a large Bow Echo complex. That's going to be right around 2 in the morning. And there was definitely some wind damage in southeast Oklahoma and the Red River region. But it eventually gusted out overnight. You can see it pushing down in East Texas. Very pronounced outflow boundary and heads right into the Houston, Beaumont area and down towards Victoria. But there's the imagery around 2 p.m. this afternoon, most of it heading into the Gulf of Mexico. The satellite imagery does show some nice clearing in the wake of that. The air is overturned, drier air filtering in, and of course, warmer air in the mid and upper levels. But down there around Junction, Ozona, Sonora, more storms going up. That's going to be on the tail end of that outflow boundary and pretty much right at the intersection of that dry line. There's a look at the ingredients easterly flow. High moisture 70s dew points flowing all the way back to that thunderstorm area and maybe even some mid 70s dew points though that 77 at junction that does appear to be an isolated value. But those temperatures very warm, 104 degrees there at Ozona, 105 at Del Rio. The SPC mesoscale analysis showing 3,000 capes all the way up into the hill country and the Edwards Plateau. And there's the kinematic fields showing a convergent area in that same region where the thunderstorm is and an axis of slightly higher surface vorticity values that may indicate a little bit of maybe pressure falls, mesolow development, that kind of thing. Let's take a look at the surface map this afternoon. We see a front moving through the Midwest into the mid-Mississippi River Valley, drier air, cooler conditions back behind it, and out ahead of it we've got this very moist southwesterly flow. Precipitable water running as high as 1.5 to two inches from Virginia up to southern New York and even back into Ohio and Kentucky, 1.5 inch precipitable water. That means widespread precipitation and in fact we do have an SPC marginal risk around Washington DC and Baltimore for this afternoon. In the southeastern US, much the same thing. You can see those dew points up into the upper 60s to the mid 70s. And we do even have a marginal risk of severe weather in southern Mississippi. This afternoon, we had an MCS tracking across the entire state. Hot conditions in South Texas once again. We've backed off from the very intense heat that we had yesterday. San Antonio hit their all-time highest heat index at 117. But for now, very pleasant 91 degrees in San Antonio. A weak front through North Texas, we get back into some downslope, so not much of a improvement in the conditions back there in Kansas, but up to the north there's that cooler weather, and in fact we've got winds gusting up to 30 to 40 miles an hour, especially in North Dakota. And we do have wind warnings all the way into Saskatchewan for this afternoon. For the western U.S., excessive heat warnings all the way through Friday, that goes from around Safford and Douglas, back to Phoenix, Las Vegas, up to Reno, up to San Joaquin Valley, and down through the Los Angeles area. So it is going to be a hot couple of days. Temperatures possibly as high as 111 at Phoenix. Out in the Pacific, there's the North Pacific High. We're going to be seeing a lot more of that over the next month or two. Alaska looking pretty good for this afternoon. No major advisories in the state for today. Rather calm conditions. A little bit of downslope flow around Fort Greeley for tonight, but that is about it. Northern Canada, under the influence of this Arctic Ocean high-pressure system, 
pushing a little bit of cold air down into Nunavut, and that is filtering down into the Canadian prairies. And out in eastern Canada, this is pretty significant. They have heat warnings all through the James Bay area. 90 degrees at Moosonee with a 61 degree dew point and a 66 degree dew point further to the northwest. 86 almost to Fort Severn. But fortunately, it doesn't go too far north. We pick up that warm front and a northeasterly flow. Much cooler conditions coming off of Hudson Bay. And then we go up to 700 millibars. This is about 10,000 feet up. This is somewhat significant for Texas because this reflects the extent of the capping. Now, the capping is somewhat dependent on elevation, but for a specific location like Dallas or Houston, you can follow that from day to day to figure out what the cap is doing. And we do see that the 12 Celsius line is right through here. And that demarcates the western extent of some of that strong convection, maybe 12 to 12.5, right in there. So we can check that out for tomorrow. And if we're expecting any convection, that'll give us an idea of where the western periphery might be. So this is going to be for tomorrow afternoon. We see that 12 to 12.5 area right there west of I-35. So maybe backing a little bit further to the west. Then for Friday, it is looking like this. So pretty much in the same position. But on the high plains, yeah, we can have stronger capping and still get storms because of the effects of the higher terrain. And then we go up to 500 millibars, the middle troposphere. You notice this chart looks a little bit different. And that's because I emulate the daily weather map style. Some of you may have seen these charts before. These are produced daily all the way back to the late 1800s. And uh, I don't think the upper air data goes back that far, but uh, this is a pretty familiar style, kind of a standard. So I figured it'd be kind of fun to emulate that. The daily weather maps these days, well, I don't know what happened to the quality, but they've really taken kind of a downturn. These maps really don't look quite as good as they used to. So what we see here is part of the jet stream pattern. There's the polar front jet coming in from the central Pacific out through the Midwest, the Corn Belt area. Then we get into this high amplitude, kind of a blocky pattern in eastern Canada. And uh, that's going to kind of keep the pattern a little bit locked up. And we see this broad troughing out there in the Pacific. And the appearance of ridging in the southwestern U.S., that's associated with the onset of that heat wave in the southwestern states. And there's the actual jet stream level, 250 millibars, about 34,000 feet, showing that polar front jet coming into British Columbia down into the Dakotas and rounding that very sharp ridge across Quebec and Hudson Bay. And that's where that 90 degree weather is right there around James Bay. The subtropical jet has dipped down to the south, almost off the map, and you can see the reduced flow across Texas, Arkansas. That's partly the reason we've seen a decline in some of that really severe weather from two weeks ago. And a very important feature during the summertime, the position of the subtropical high. We don't always see a closed high in the U.S., but today, yes, we've definitely got one. There's that anticyclonic flow across the Four Corners and northern Arizona. So that's going to be the location of the subtropical high, and you can watch that from day to day to get an idea where the heat wave is going to be positioned. So we can just go on up into Thursday. It appears to be centered in northern New Mexico. So we do expect some hot temperatures in that part of the country into the panhandles. And then for Friday, well, where did it go? Looks like it uh, vanished and it's replaced by this troughing in the West Coast area, more troughing out in the Pacific. This is significant because we're going to take a look at that Hovmuller diagram in a second. Let's see, ridging across Texas, so some hot weather for Friday continuing. And then maybe backing off a little bit for Saturday and Sunday as we break down that ridge and get some of that troughing into the southwestern states. 
There's the Hove Muller diagram for 500 millibar heights looking at April and May and part of June. So going down the diagram that gets into more recent dates and the x-axis, what is that? That's going to be longitude. So this is going to be the Pacific. This is going to be the Atlantic. And in fact, yeah, there you go. That shows you where everything is. So the U.S. located right in here. And what do we see on this diagram? Well, the yellows, those are going to correspond to upper ridges, warm weather, fair skies, and the greenish colors and the blues, those are going to be upper level troughs. So we do see some retrogression of this ridge from the west coast into the Pacific. A little bit of troughing starting to show right there. And it looks like a little bit of troughing going down roughly along this line into the central U.S., the western U.S. That's going to correspond to maybe the change in weather in the western U.S. this weekend. There's those uh, below normal heights and maybe a little bit of ridging building into the central U.S. in about a week. So this kind of gives us an idea maybe where the long waves are going to be positioned. The short waves... That's this stuff right here that tracks this way. Those are very progressive, moving from west to east, maybe 20 to 30 knots. And those are superimposed on the long wave pattern. So the hove muller diagram, this can be quite useful. And there's the uh, title for anybody that's curious. So let's take a look at that weather and put the fronts into motion. There's that cold air sweeping into the Great Lakes and the Midwest. So this is overnight cold air infiltrating into the mid-Mississippi River Valley. Then we get up to tomorrow afternoon. Large area of cold air advection down to 546 decameters for those thicknesses. The high temperature for tomorrow at Duluth, 61, and 67 at Minneapolis. Meanwhile, in the southwest, a lot of warm weather. Looking at highs of 112 in Phoenix, 111 at Las Vegas, 108 at Tucson, and 107 at Fresno. Death Valley looking for 124 degrees. And Salt Lake City getting some heat as well with 94 degrees. Then we go into Friday. Not a whole lot of change. Some of that cold air sweeps a little bit further to the east. We are looking for an SPC marginal risk in western Kansas, maybe right in here near this lee side trough. Some of that moisture is starting to infiltrate northward. The main risk gusty winds, large hail, places like Garden City, Dodge City, Goodland, Kit Carson, and Burlington. And with that cold air spreading into the Great Lakes, looking for a high of 65 at Pittsburgh, 69 at Detroit, and 75 at Indianapolis. As we go into Saturday, yeah, a lot of thunderstorm activity through Kansas and Missouri, Meanwhile, lots of heat out west. We're looking for highs of 88 degrees at Spokane, 91 at Portland, and 99 degrees at Boise. That moisture will continue working to the north in Colorado, looking for precipitable waters over an inch. That's going to be about 1.5 times the normal values. So widespread thunderstorms are a possibility. Precipitable water also quite high across Kansas and Missouri, over two inches so a good chance of MCSs and clusters of storms with heavy rain. You can see those breaking out right there and spreading to the east across the Ozarks. Then we go into Sunday. Significant cool down for the panhandles in Oklahoma. MCSs, northwesterly flow storms probably returning once again. And a break from the heat out west as that upper level trough approaches. The marine layer will be building into California over the weekend. For Monday, that cold air continues to infiltrate south, looking for a high of 86 at DFW. Then for Tuesday, that cold air reaches into central Texas. Highs only about 90 degrees at Austin. The heat starting to fire up once again in the western U.S., up to 102 at Fresno. 106 at Las Vegas. Widespread 2 to 2.5 inch precipitable water across this entire area. The southeastern U.S., the Gulf Coast area, looking for extensive precipitation for next week. 
And then towards late weekend, the weekend, yes, the models are going for a possibility of tropical weather in the Gulf. The European model not indicating anything like that. So we'll just wait and see how that all resolves. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I do want to thank our supporters, people like Ginger, Marshall Halleck, Chris Hobbs, Andrew Hotchkiss, Brian Nelson, William Oosterbond, Caleb Weaver, Missy Westland, Dennis Woods. Thanks to all of you for helping to keep the program going. All right, we'll see you back here for another edition on Friday. Hard to believe it's just two days away. Have a great Wednesday night, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.